Welcome. I am so glad you're here. Have you ever felt a hunger for more in your life? Have you ever felt the sense of dissatisfaction with some aspect of your life? I want to let you know that there is a way to be filled. There is a way to know God and to do life with him. My name is Courtney Cohen, and this is Now Found, where we believe you are never too lost to be found. You'll hear in some other videos my husband's radical story of turning from being this hate-filled, atheistic antichrist into a man who is totally surrendered to the God he used to hate. As for me, I grew up in the church. I was very familiar with the Bible and how this whole church thing worked, and I knew who Jesus was. But in my heart, I was still rebellious. I wanted to be in control of my life. I wanted to set my agenda. I knew exactly what I was going to do with every single thing. And I was prideful. I measured my identity. I measured my worth based on accolades from other people, based on the things that I accomplished. And then over time, I completely lost all sense of self because I was just seeking after everything that couldn't measure up. So there was a season of my life where I was just restless. I was really bothered inside and nothing was satisfying me. And later on, I realized that what God was doing in that season is he was deliberately making everything else in my life not measure up to him so that I would hunger for him. And so then one day came where that restlessness got the best of me and I gave up all control. And I say, God, I don't know what to do with my life anymore. I don't even know who I am. I need you to be my defining factor. I need you to take control because I am not doing this the way that you have designed me to live and I'm not being the person you've designed me to be. So you need to take control. So when God created this world, he placed two people in it. You might be familiar with their names, Adam and Eve. And yes, they were actual people that lived in this world. And God created a paradise, absolute perfection. If you could imagine the most perfect scenario where nothing should go wrong, they had it. And yet they still made a decision to disobey the one thing that God told them not to do. They made a decision to disobey. And that disobedience, that choice to take control, to be in charge, invited chaos into this world. And that that disobedience, it has a name, you might have heard this too, and that's called sin. Sin is simply where we're doing something that doesn't meet up to God's perfect standard. But God made a way for humanity to be rescued from that choice, to be rescued from the chaos that we invited in through that decision, through that disobedience. That way that he created allows us not only to be cleansed, to erase all of the the terrible choices and sins that we have committed throughout our lives, but even more, it allows us to be reunited with God. The way that God made for us is through Jesus. Jesus came and he lived on this earth. He lived a life that we are incapable of living. And he died a death that we deserve. He took it all. And so we now get to take a step and partner with God through believing in Jesus. So let's take a look at what that means. So how do we live this life with God? How do we partner with God and live the life he has designed for us, full of purpose, full of beauty? How do we do that? Well, first we have to admit where we're at. We've got to admit that, yes, we disobeyed, that we have gone our own way. We've tried to be in control and that we are messing it up. I'm messy, you're messy, that is humanity. We're all just messy people and we can't do this all by ourselves. We can't be good enough to earn our way. We haven't lived up to God's perfect standard. We've tried to take control. We've worshiped other things. We have tried to define truth for ourselves instead of looking to God's standard of truth. 
to inform our understanding. Let's take a look at this and what the Bible says. So the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, his letter to the people living in Rome at the time, he said, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are, for everyone has sinned. Everyone's messed up. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through the Messiah, Jesus, who is our rescuer. When he freed us from the penalty for our sins, for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God. They are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. So what do we do? We believe in what Jesus did for us. And we give God total control of our lives. Paul continues later in this letter and he says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and non-Jew are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So you've got to admit where you're at. Admit that you've messed up and you've got to trust in what Jesus has done for you. And that's great. And that seems very simple, but it's not always easy because there's something else that we need to do. We need to count the cost. It is simple to believe. It's not always easy to live it out. And Jesus told us that he wants us to think about what it's going to involve because it's going to take everything we have. Here's what Jesus said about it in Mark 8. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything, is anything worth more than your soul? And then later he tells this very short but powerful story. It's called a parable. And he says in Matthew 13, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and went and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. So there's this man, he goes out, he sees There's this treasure hidden in this field. He goes back to town. He gathers everything, all possessions, every last shred of everything he's acquired in his entire life, and he goes and sells it. What do you think that his neighbors were thinking about him? What do you think his family thought about him? That he's crazy. This is insane. Why would you do this to go buy some empty field? But they didn't know what he knew. Any scrap that he gave up was nothing compared to the infinite treasure that he was about to gain. It's the same way with us. Jesus tells us to count the cost of following him because there is a cost. It's everything. It's everything that we are, everything we have, everything we want to do with our lives. It's our identity. It's our plans. It's our agenda. It's everything. And yet everything we have doesn't compare to what God wants to replace it with. So we start off separated from God. And God made a way through Jesus to bridge that gap, that gap that we could never hope to cross. So we have to shift the way we're thinking about what life is, what the purpose of us even being here is. We have to shift the way that we're thinking about what heaven and hell are, what it, what it means to be a good person. We've got to change the way we think. We've got to give up everything, trusting that God is going to give us 
infinitely more, infinitely better than we can ever hope or imagine. We've got to give up control because he is going to take the reins and do something with your life that you could never think of right now. It's going to blow your mind. We trust in Jesus to make us clean, to make us right before God, something else we could never do. And we follow Jesus with everything that we are. Are you ready? Are you ready to do those things? If you are, right now, take a moment and tell God that you've messed up. Tell him that you can't earn your way, that you are insufficient without him. Tell him that you need him. Let him know that you trust in Jesus to save you and to reunite you with the God that loves you more than anything. It's not about saying a specific prayer. It's not about some magical set of words. It's about the posture of your heart. Going before God and saying, I can't do this without you. I need you. I need you. So this is just the beginning. What's next? What's next? You get to go. You get to keep on growing. You're not supposed to just stay here and live in this place stagnant for the rest of your life. So one thing that we at Now Found are going to do is keep helping you grow. We're going to have videos. We have content on our website at nowfound.org, and we want to grow with you. So right now, take a second and subscribe or follow for more. And don't miss this step, because if you just gave your life to Jesus, we want to celebrate with you. The Bible says that heaven is just throwing a crazy party. They are rejoicing over even one sinner turning around their life and turning back to God. So if you just gave your life to Jesus, we want to celebrate with you. Comment below. Make sure that you comment and say, I gave my life to Jesus. We are so excited you're here. We're so excited to keep growing with you. Thank you, and we will see you next time.